Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news. Let's get started. All right, we'll kick things off with some more shenanigans on the App Store, and this time with Nintendo DS emulation and Drastic. Now, this is not the real version of Drastic DS. And unfortunately, they're charging 7 bucks for it. I mean, even the reviews kind of called this out. It's got a 1 star rating out of 5, and all 3 reviews featured are calling it fake or a scam. Interestingly enough, if we go on ahead and click on the developer here, we can see some other fake apps. So we talked about a couple of these before, and they're still up on the App Store, and that's My Boy and John GBA. Both of these are not the real deal, and both are costing people money. Based on how quickly Apple acted to remove iGBA, I'm kind of surprised to see these three fake emulators kicking around. So if you are looking for a Nintendo DS emulator on the App Store, you may want to check out Delta. It's 100% free, it's open source, and it's currently sitting in first place in the top free apps in the entertainment section. It's beating out a whole bunch of big things. But moving on, and next up we're talking about Atari 2600 emulation with Gopher 2600. And Gopher 2600 is, you probably guessed it, an Atari 2600 emulator written in Go. So at the time of filming, version 0.30.0 is the latest update. We've got a bunch of bug fixes and some brand new features here. For example, ROM selection window can now navigate into zip files. And speaking about navigating files, next up we're talking about Steam ROM Manager, a free and open source program used for adding non-Steam games to Steam. So version 2.4.19 has released. We've got some bug fixes and a brand new feature, the ability to search games on the View Games page. Moving on, and we're quickly talking about the MIG Switch Nintendo Switch Flash Cart. Now we talked about this one the other day when RGT85 put out a video claiming that he may have gotten scammed. Him and a whole bunch of other people ordered these things at the beginning of January and still haven't received them. Anyways, in my opinion, the supply chain issue has kind of resulted in a lack of review videos on YouTube. DNA Mobile Gaming got his hands on a MIG Switch flash card. He ordered from a few different places, and interestingly enough, the place that shipped to him first was AliExpress. If you are curious about it, I'll drop a link to his video in the description below, and feel free to check it out. He walks through a whole bunch of stuff about this thing. And speaking about a friendly heads up, next up we're talking about Windows emulation on Android with Dark OS. I'm pretty sure I've talked about this one before, but if I haven't... This is a project designed to run Windows x86 and 64 applications and games in Termix. It utilizes Box86 and 64 to run Wine on Android. The last update to this project was on February 10th with Beta 0.0.1. I'm almost positive we've talked about this one before. But some people are claiming that this runs better than Mobox and also WinLater and also Exegear. I guess performance may vary. I have not tested this one out yet, and I do advise use caution if you're trying to use it. Now to be clear, I'm not advocating for Dark OS, and I'm not advocating against it, I'm just presenting the news. I haven't been able to put this one through its paces yet, and I haven't seen a whole lot of news about it just yet either. Let me know your thoughts about Dark OS in the comments below. Next up, we're talking about a very interesting project. It's called ShortStack, and it's the world's smallest Wii using a trimmed motherboard and custom stacked PCBs. If you're wondering how small this thing is, it's basically the size of a deck of cards, and the right image there has the short stack sitting on a Wii. Now the first thing I notice is that the disk drive is not going to fit a normal Nintendo Wii disk. So if we go on ahead and take a look at the features, it does say micro SD card stores games and saves instead of disk drive and memory card. So I guess that solves that. It's got Bluetooth for Wiimotes and accessories, HDMI, it's powered by USB-C and it's got four GameCube controller ports. So here's the picture for the GameCube controller ports, and right off the bat you can probably tell it's not like their standard GameCube controller ports. 
And here is the converted GameCube controller. Obviously, again, looking a little bit different. If you wanted to build one of these yourself, a lot of the instructions are over on GitHub. And if you just wanted to learn more about the project, check out the GitHub. I'll drop a link to it in the description below. Next up, we're quickly talking about Cave Story on the PS Vita with decompilation project CSE2 Vita. Now, CSE stands for Subscribe to Mr. Sujano, or Cave Story Engine, depending on how you want to interpret that. And CSE2 Vita just got a brand new release. So version 1.0.3 just dropped, and it's got some minor updates. It fixes the water foreground, not filling the entire screen in dark place. They added in the Japanese language and also changed the start icon. If you wanted to see CSE2 in action, I'll drop a link to a YouTube video in the description below and I guess feel free to check it out. Next up, we're quickly talking about Fallout 4. And thanks to the new Fallout TV show, Fallout 4 has jumped in popularity. According to GameIndustry.biz, it's sitting at number one across Europe. Now, if we head on over to Steam Charts and take a look at the current most popular games, we can see Fallout 4 sitting in 12th place. It beat out GTA 5, and surprisingly here, Stardew Valley is in 7th. I'm guessing this is because of that free update for version 1.6. Anyways, getting back to Fallout 4 here and taking a look at their game history, we can see a massive spike at the beginning of April, which I'm assuming is directly related to the TV show. Overall, I'd argue this is pretty impressive for a game that released back in 2015. And for reference here, just on a side note, Stardew Valley released back in 2016. It is worth pointing out that release dates don't really matter too much. I mean, Counter-Strike 2 is sitting in first place and it was released back in 2012. Dota 2 is in second and it was released back in 2013. Next up we're quickly talking about City Skylines 2 and this game has arguably been in the center of a controversy lately with their latest DLC. You can see the latest reviews on Steam here are mostly negative. The DLC arguably is a bit of a... a how should I say this? It it appeared to be rushed and not very well thought out and not very well coded. Fortunately, Colossal Order, the developer behind this game, seems to have listened and they're trying to do right by the community. They published this blog post called The Way Forward, an update from the team behind City Skylines. So in this post, they say the very first thing they're doing is to compensate those who purchased beach properties. We will change the pack to be a free addition to the game and refund it to the extent possible and provide additional content within the Ultimate Edition. So in the event that you didn't purchase the standalone DLC and you purchased the Ultimate Edition, they say here that Ultimate Edition holders will be getting three creator packs and three radio stations which together sum up a value of $39.99. Now, I'd argue the price of City Skylines 2 Ultimate Edition is not cheap, but at least they're trying to do something here to rectify the situation. Let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below. Are they doing enough or are they not doing enough? And speaking about doing enough, next up we're talking about a brand new Kickstarter that has already smashed its goal. It's an action RPG called Free Stars Children of Infinity, and they say it's the long-awaited sequel to the Yurquan Masters. So at the time of filming, there's currently 28 days to go, and they've already hit almost triple their initial ask. Now, if this pace does keep up and they end up hitting $4.4 million raised, this game will be completely open source. And for reference here, the base price of this game is 30 bucks. I will drop a link to this Kickstarter in the description below in the event that you wanted to check it out. And let me know your thoughts about three people backing the $10,000 tier. Do you think that's crazy or do you think that's expected based on the game? And speaking about games in development, next up we're talking about a brand new indie game that has just popped up on Steam. It's called Breach the Abyss, and they're calling this one a wave-based action roguelike. I'll drop a link to it in the description below in the event that you want to check it out. They're saying it's releasing sometime in 2024. Next up, we're shifting away from indie and going to the exact opposite, and check out this headline over on Windows Central. Microsoft Xbox has taken over Sony's PlayStation Store. And here's the information that kind of sums everything up. Microsoft currently has more games on the PlayStation Store's top 25 bestsellers list than Sony does. 
This list includes two Fallout games and two first-party Microsoft titles that were previously only available on Xbox consoles. Now, in fairness, this really isn't that surprising given the fact that Microsoft has purchased Activision Blizzard. I mean, the second game on the list is Call of Duty, which arguably is part of PlayStation's bread and butter. If you are curious about this list, though, I'll drop a link to the articles in the description below and feel free to check them out. And let me know your thoughts about Microsoft essentially taking over this list. And speaking about Microsoft, last up here we're talking about a very impressive mod. It's called Halo 2 HD. And someone's got Halo 2 up and running at the standard 480p, 720p, and 1080i on the original Xbox. I'm not joking with you. And on top of that, there's triple buffering support to increase FPS performance. They utilize extra RAM if you've got the 128 megabyte RAM upgrade. There's GPU overclocking for performance improvements. They've increased the HDD transfer speed for faster load times. There's customizable field of view and customizable split screen divider. They state that this patch can be used on any soft or hard modded Xbox console with no additional hardware modifications. However, if you don't have the 128 megabyte mod, you will only be able to play the game in 480p mode. And if you wanted to see this in a heck of a lot more detail, I'll drop a link to a dedicated YouTube video in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. And I'll also drop a link to the project's GitHub in the description below. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. We talked about a bunch today. Let me know your thoughts about absolutely any of it in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like, hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos, don't tempt fate, save your state.